First, I want to add the material, which will be transparent, so that our terrain collision will always be hidden. Add the material to our terrain, name it transparent, and make it a transparent BSDF. But make sure all the values are at 1. In the join node setup, right before the group output, add the set material node, set it to transparent, and for the selection, read our named attribute, and here it should be collision or slope. Now in the viewport display tab of the material, you can set the color with a lower alpha value, so it's almost hidden. Now let's really start with the terrain. Add a new collection and name it Instances Source. We start by making three types of objects. Rocks for the underground, soil for the top of the ground, and finally, a first type of grass. Let's go into the shading tab now. At this point, let's also set the render engine to cycles and the device to GPU compute. As I am working with an NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti and an RTX 4080. Now let's select the rocks and hide everything else. To be really efficient when generating the rocks, I like to use an add-on, which is called Add Mesh Extra Object. With this enabled, when you press Shift A under Mesh, you have a rock generator. I want to add about five different types of rocks. Now let's play around with the settings, so we have something which is quite high res. I think that this will look nice, so let's reduce the display detail to one. Now let's set a rock material and apply it to all the rock objects. To differentiate it later with all the other textures, in the under the viewport display, let's set it to somewhat of a grayish color. For the rocks, I mainly kept the modifiers from the extra mesh add-on. I just tweaked the display's strength so I get more details where I want it and added another subsurf modifier at the beginning. Regarding the shading, the setup is pretty simple. I am just overlaying two noises to drive the color, roughness and bump. The first noise has a quite low scale with a high roughness and detail and a bit of distortion, while the other has no distortion but has a greater scale. This one, is, uh, this one is driving the bump node. Both of them are stacked using two bump nodes, so we get loads of detail in the normal section. And the first noise also goes through a map range node, so I can get a bit of roughness variation. And with the float curve, after I tweak the brightness and contrast, I am using this to mix between two different grayscale values, which I then multiply with a color to get a bit of a richer rock color. Also, you can set the texture coordinates to objects instead of generated to prevent some texture distortions with the displace modifiers. Now we will start from the same settings to do our soil, duplicate all that, put this into the soil collection, rename all that soil, and let's reset all their position with Alt G. With the soil, what I want is that the origin of the mesh would be at the top of the soil, and the top of the soil will be a big flat out side compared to the other ones. For example, for this one, I'm going to edit my mesh. This will work for our first soil piece. Then let's do the same and trick the parameter. Great, so now let's edit the texture, select all of the objects, duplicate the material, and rename it soil. Ctrl L to link the materials, and now let's trick the colors. For the soil, the setup is really the same. But I increased the scale of the two noise textures by a fair amount, changed the settings on my flood curves, and obviously the multiply color, so we get a richer brown for the soil. And the modifiers are about set up the same. So here are my final soil pieces.
and rock pieces. Let's just select everything and lower the level viewport. And let's move on to the grass. All the grass at the plane and merge all the vertices at the center. Now we can extrude it a few times to have a first blade. With all the vertices selected, you can extrude the blade and tweak a bit its shape. Add a subdivision surface modifier and a new material called grass. In the viewport display tab, you can put it to a greenish value. With this first blade of grass, we can get to the top view and duplicate it a few times, move it around, and so on. Now enable proportional editing and move everything around. By changing the transform pivot to individual origin, you can duplicate this, rotate it around, and change the distribution so we have a bit of a bigger patch of grass. Now let's trim the material. Duplicate it and do that again to have, a, to have about four different grass instances. For the grass, I am first picking a random color per island, which goes through a color ramp to choose between different green or yellowish values, which I then took a bit with a U saturation value node. Then I am blending between two different values based on the height of the grass. So I have one darker, less saturated color and the original color, which I am blending like this. So the darker color is at the bottom. And I am also using the height to blend between the translucent BSDF of this color and the principal BSDF. This way, the grass is more translucent at the top than at the bottom, which adds a bit of ambient occlusion and gives a really nice effect when there is a whole bunch of grass. The roughness is kept pretty low. And here is a look depth view of the three types of assets and the render settings of all the modifiers with higher subdivision surface. Now let's hide all of those instances and hide everything else. And let's go back to the geometry nodes tab. And let's start by instancing those rocks. Instead of creating a cube and distributing points in the volume, I find it more efficient to add a bunch of points and give them random position inside the cube. So let's add a new input, which is going to be rock count. Here I will start with around 1000 points. And for the position, we can give it a random value ranging from chunk size divided by 2 on the x and y axis to the same but divided by minus 2 on the other side and to add a bit of depth let's add another input which will be a chunk depth which I am going to multiply by minus 1 which I am going to plug it into the V input of the first combined XYZ node now let's add a store named attribute node which is going to be a boolean named rocks and set to true and all these are our rocks points which I can plug right here into the join geometry node. Now with those new points we can see a first issue because here when you are computing the noise to get the Z position offset is also taking into account the Z component of the original position of those points. But we don't want that because we only want it to compute the noise position depending on the X and Y coordinates. So here we just need to set this value to zero. And now it works correctly. Next, let's start to instance those rocks on this. Add an instance on points node with the selection being or a named attribute set to rocks. And for the instance, you can drag in our rocks collection. Now we also need to remove the points from the original flow of geometry. 
So add a separated geometry node right before the set material node and just move the section of the set material node to the separated geometry. Right after this, you can add the join geometry node and plug in our new instances. Click pick instance, reset children and separate children. Now let's start to play around with scale. Add a random value node, set to float and plug that into the scale. We can decrease the first value by quite a big amount. And for the rotation, duplicate this, set it to vector and go from minus pi to pi. Now that's a start. Then let's already implement a kind of fall off so that all the rocks that are further from a certain distance are fading. Let's add a simple geometry, for example, a cone. I'm just going to set it to invisible for all the ray and to not render here. I am, I am going to call it proximity island and I want this display to be wire. Then I can rotate it and edit everything a bit. Here we can bisect everything. So we can add some more loop cuts and give this a more interesting shape. Now let's have it control the scale in our geometry node setup for the terrain. Drag in your proximity island, set it to relative, and from the geometry, we can add the geometry proximity node. Then let's compute the distance vector between each point of the mesh and the points of our instances. And if we just take this distance, it won't make the difference between the inside and outside of our mesh island. So to do that, we also need a sample near surface node, which we sample a vector being the normal of the mesh. And with the dot product operation, it will allow us to make the difference between the points that are out of the mesh and the points that are inside, because we are comparing the difference of position to the direction of the closest normal. Just make sure the object info is not set as instance. Then from the dot product, you can take the map range node and right away we can plug that with the math operation set to multiply right between the scale of our instances. Right away we can see the effect of this node pretty well. So everything which is outside of our island is disappearing. Now let's tweak the effect of the scale. And here I can increase the chunk's depth a bit. Now let's have a look at that with the render. Which is already looking pretty good with all of the beautiful rocks we made before. So let's tidy this up a bit. Select all this. Ctrl J. And rename that. Master Instance Scale. So for the soil, the first thing we, we can do is make a bit of room for this. So we can already offset the top value of all this by a small amount, so nothing is popping up above the road. And let's duplicate all this for our soil points. It will be about the same, but we just want it to be on the surface of the mesh, so we don't need the Z component. And we can have a new input to set the number of soil. Let's put it around 250 for now. Also rename the attribute to soil and add this to the join geometry node. Now right beside where we instanced our rocks, let's Ctrl Shift D duplicate all this setup and fetch the collection info from the soil. Plug this right here and change the attributes to soil. Now if you remember correctly, we set up our soil meshes so that one face is always flat. Now we just need to adjust the rotation of everything so that the flat face is always facing the top. First, let's unplug this random value and add a sample nearest surface node. Here, the target mesh will be the collision mesh, so we can take our main flow line, add a separate geometry node with the named attribute as a selection being collision. And this mesh can be plugged here and set the sample nearest surface node to vector to sample the normal. Then we can add an align error to vector node. Here, we want to align the Z vector. And if you plug this into the rotation, all the rotation will match what we had on the main road. Now for some more variation, we can plug back our random value node from before into the rotation of the underlying Euler to vector node, but we only want a value on the z-axis. Now it's looking pretty well. Now let's see how we can generalize those systems so we don't duplicate all of those nodes. We can just select all this, leaving out only the rotation, Press Ctrl plus G to group that. Plug the name of the attribute right here. Add a new input. Same for the collection. 
and add the min and max value for the scale. Also, the value is the master scale, which I am going to put at the bottom. Now I can duplicate this and replace that on our soil data lines. So plug the points, change the name to soil, collection to soil. You can plug in our rotation and plug that back into our joint geometry node without forgetting the master scale. Now we can remove all this and it's way cleaner. We can group this and call it line rotation to collision. And finally, for the base biome, let's do the same for the grass. We can duplicate the setup for the soil points, just rename it grass, and plug it into the joint geometry node at the beginning. Make sure to add a new input for the grass count. And now let's go at the end of everything, duplicate the setup for the soil, change the attribute and collection, and plug it into the joint geometry node at the end. Now, obviously, don't forget to set a grass count to around 250 or so. Now, let's play around with the max and minimum scale. The rotation we can keep the same as for the soil. So, let's move this a bit on the side. Let's get our points position and separate the X, Y, Z component. Now, with our points on the X component, I can compute the absolute position, plug this into a map range node so that we have a value of 0 right under the bit of the character to form a path and a value of 1 on the sides. Now this can be multiplied with the master scale of the grass node. And just like that, we have a path. Now let's do a quick render to see how it looks. Now I just want to make a quick edit on the falloff of our master scale because at the moment it's just something linear, which is a bit boring. So let's move this a bit, add the float curve right after the map range node. For the grass, it isn't realistic to have it follow directly the angle of the ground. So I'm just putting a random value, just as for the rocks, and instead of going minus pi to pi on all the channel, I will just offset it by a slight value. And it also makes way more sense on the slopes. And that's it for this part. Hope you learned something here. In the next video, we will focus on the character itself and the general scene and lighting setup. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any question. Thank you for watching and see you next time.